Let's chat about that Coral Sea tropical cyclone because it is going to happen at this point in time. Very, very confident in saying that. We've got some increased convective activity here towards the north of Australia, and that's going to be sliding out with that Kelvin wave over to the Solomon Islands. And we're expecting the development of a tropical low pressure system around December 10th here around the Solomon Islands. So that's the thing going to track down towards Vanuatu and New Caledonia. Definitely a feature that we want to be watching at this point in time. So let's have a look at our forecast modeling. Not a threat to Queensland, and the reason why is that jet stream still blowing very strong. And if you've been watching any of my forecast updates as of late, you'll have learnt why that jet stream will be pushing any tropical cyclone that develops into the Coral Sea out towards the east and keeping it well away from Queensland so that it doesn't become a threat. And you can see that low pressure system beginning to get itself going on over the Solomon Islands by the 13th and the 14th, and then moving down towards Vanuatu and New Caledonia as we get out to about the 15th or the 16th. Now, the European forecast, which is what we're looking at right now, is not keen at all on getting this system going. And I believe it because there is still a lot of wind shear uh, from the jet stream blowing across this part here. If it is going to develop into a tropical cyclone, it's got to do it in this red circle here, uh, just towards the south of the Solomon Islands before conditions become hostile for this storm at south of this orange line, including Vanuatu and Fiji, which takes the land into uh, impacts out of the equation for those locations. But the GFS, bullish as usual, is calling for a fully-fledged tropical cyclone to develop sometime around Saturday the 13th of December, tracking it down Vanuatu as a reasonably strong Category 1 or Category 2 strength system, and then pushing it out towards Fiji at the end of the forecast period. Of course, we take this one with a heavy pinch of salt because the GFS is a massive overestimator of tropical cyclone intensity. So what I actually expect to uh, happen here is just a broad low-pressure system, a Category 1 cyclone at the absolute most. And even for Vanuatu and New Caledonia, which are sort of expecting a direct direct impact from this system, it's not worth one worth worrying about right now. And I'm going to wait till about the 10th or the 11th before I start calling for this system to develop at this point in time. But for the Coral Sea, I really don't think that this is a system worth worrying about. We will keep close tabs on it, though. It's definitely a feature that I want to keep close tabs on, and I will keep monitoring. Interesting, that's for sure. And of course, as usual, no threat to Queensland. Now, the 18th of December, I believe a cruise ship departs Brisbane, headed for the Vanuatu area. And the risk for that cruise ship being impacted by this severe weather or this tropical cyclone is absolutely none. But I've seen multiple comments on my Facebook pages and my um, YouTube page as well. So just for those that are watching in that are traveling on that cruise ship, first of all, have an amazing holiday. Second of all, you're not going to have a tropical cyclone to contend with. So really not a feature that I would be worrying about at this point in time. Western Australia could see a significant run of tropical cyclone activity after the 10th of December. The Bureau of Meteorology is still monitoring a 10% chance here towards the north of Australia, and that's going to be heading out into the Indian Ocean as we get out to about the 10th or the 11th of December. And this could develop into our second tropical cyclone adjacent to the Northern Territory West Australian waters, moving out into the Indian Ocean by the 15th of December or so, and then the East Moorf has this developing around the 17th or the 18th of December, and it could get up to a significant tropical cyclone intensity, talking severe tropical cyclone Plus, uh, and that will continue our run of an active start from Western Australia and the Northern Territory to our tropical cyclone season. The GFS is unusually not actually not really that keen on this system here and definitely not keen on this system coming close to the Australian mainland, but I definitely don't reckon that this is going to be a threat to Western Australia at all, or same with the Northern Territory. But I do believe that we are going to be seeing at least a Category 1 strength tropical cyclone offshore uh, in this uh, region here, uh, either coming out of uh, the Timor Sea or coming down here from the tropical zones via the Kokos Keeling Islands, either option two here or option one, and it could get up to a significant tropical cyclone status, but again, as similar to the Queensland situation, absolutely no threat whatsoever to the Australian mainland. Still a feature that I will keep close tabs on though, so I will keep you posted on that. But anyways, that is going to do it for today's weather forecast update. I do hope you've enjoyed it. It'll be interesting to see what this high cloud coverage does, but a high-end severe thunderstorm outbreak is still possible towards the north of Coffs Harbour up towards Grafton and through southeast Queensland tonight. It is going to be a stormy one, so make sure you do buckle up. Sunshine Coast forecast to miss out. I forgot to mention that in the Southeast Queensland special, but that's going to do it for me today. I'll have more coverage throughout the day, including a video update later and live updates later when these thunderstorms do become very dangerous or when they become a, a Queensland threat, but that'll do it for now. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. The names are on screen right now, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.